Hey folks, how are you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. Uh, it is uh, bright and early on a Monday morning, a little bit before 5 a.m. And I'm um, starting, starting the work week off good. Um, it's been a little while since I shot one of these vlog videos, so I'm just going to update a bunch of stuff. I've been really busy making some um, Christmas stuff at the last minute and haven't really been recording much at all. Just trying to take some time and, and, and enjoy the, the non-camera shop life. Uh, which is something I don't do as much as I should. You know, I got into woodworking because I enjoy woodworking. And um, sometimes the camera just gets in the way. It's just part of it. No big deal. Um, so I've just been turning, leaving the camera off and knocking out some Christmas projects, Christmas gifts, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we got a few things on this list. So the first thing is uh, my Dragonfly Sidekick. So if you're not familiar, my leather apron that I've got, it's a Dragonfly Woodworking and Leather Leather Apron. I bought it. I love it. It's custom made specifically for me, so it, it fits me. It fits like a glove. Everything is where I want it to be. Um, Patrick and Michelle, the, the two individuals who have Dragonfly Woodworking and Leather, they are fantastic people. Just awesome, awesome, awesome people. They, anyway, they sent me a, um, <laughs> they sent a, a, another apron for my daughter, uh, which is <laughs> really, really cool. And I can't wait to uh, get her out in here in the shop. Uh, can't wait for the kid to get older. Yeah, you know, you know, it's a slippery slope. You want to keep them young, you, you know, you know, because it's a one-way street. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, they also sent me one of their drag. Um, What's this called? This is the Sidekick. I think it's the Sidekick XL, the larger one, because I think they make the same thing without this lower section. Um, but I've been using this just in the shop the past month or so. Um, does this mean I don't use my leather apron anymore? No, but everyone jumps to conclusions saying I don't like a, the apron or wh why am I not wearing it? Well, I'm not using the apron in the shop because I've been messing around with this, trying to see if I, I like it, and so far I do. Um, anyway, it's it's something that just clips on your belt. You don't have to take your belt off because there's these snaps. just clips right over your belt. And I took it off, but down here at the bottom is another uh, loop or a band, I guess, strap, whatever you want to call it, that will um, strap this to, the, to your leg and prevent this from flopping around if that becomes an issue, I guess. Um, or I guess that would make really, really it does make sense if you wear this kind of like a little bit towards the front of your leg. Um, but anyway, I took it off. Yes, I like my apron. Yes, I like this. I'm just switching back and forth between the two because I've got the luxury to do so, which is really cool. So if you're interested in one of these or you want to learn more information, check out Patrick and Michelle at Dragonfly Woodworking and Leather. They're also on Instagram, so search there as well. Uh, next up is, oh, this ornament. So... Um, a gentleman by the name of Ed Styles contacted me on Instagram and wanted to send me a gift, which is appreciative. I, I, I appreciate that very much, <laughs> but I didn't understand like the kind of gift. This is, I'm going to bring you in closer. Look at this. This is uh, something he made. He is Artisan Styles on Instagram. Isn't that just amazing? First off, it's it's adorable. It's, it's beautiful, but like the craftsmanship here is, is fantastic as well. These are all turned, beautifully turned, I might add. And um, whew, get off me, fly. Um, check it out. Bates Family 2018. And down here on the, the bottom of the little girl, it's got TKB, my daughter's initials, Tyler K. Bates. Isn't this thing just awesome? I'll turn it around so you can check out my butt. That's my butt right there. You notice it's the biggest one? Don't look at my wife's butt. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, he makes these to sell. He's got a website. Uh, I'll post it in the description. Um, just, uh, just, just an incredible, incredible gift and a very, very beautiful piece. Uh, my wife was almost in tears <laughs> looking at this thing. So thank, thank you a lot, Ed, once again. And if you guys are interested in one of these, I'll have a link down below to his website. This is... Um, it's one of those things that we're kind of like moving around the house like, oh, don't break it. It's fragile. It's not really fragile, but it's just like, it's really nice. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, thanks again, Ed, man. Awesome. Next up is City Hardwoods, December 8th, which is five days from now, this weekend. All right, before I was rudely interrupted by my 
camera battery dying. Uh, next on the list is City Hardwoods, which is a store in Birmingham, Alabama. They're having their third annual, I almost put four, third animal meetup. A animal? <laughs> third animal meetup. It's early, guys. Um, <laughs> third annual meetup in Birmingham, Alabama. City Hardwoods, December 8, 2018, which is this, this Saturday. Um, I think it's from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. I think that's when it is. Anyway, the previous two have had uh, food, drinks, lots of really awesome woodworking conversations, like-minded individuals just getting together, networking, um, just talking shop, all that good stuff. They've got a tremendous amount of, a huge selection of wood for sale. They always do. And of course, they've got also some machining capabilities. So for example, if you wanted to uh, buy the lumber for a dining table but didn't have the means to make that dining table, well, they can do that for you too as well. Stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I know they do a lot of machining operations. Yeah, of course they make tables. I've seen tables being made in there. Um, <laughs> December 8, 2018, this Saturday, 10 to 3 p.m. See you guys there if you're going. We're going to have a full trip over there, a full truckload over there. Uh, there's five of us road tripping together in my truck. It's going to be me um jeremy Payne, which is jp wood j Payne woodworking i think on instagram sorry jeremy uh, uh sean stone uh he's on instagram stone and sons jason barlow um i don't jason i don't i don't know your instagram handle i know i follow you but i don't know what it is and josh edmondson of, of uh, ruckus woodshop um anyway there's gonna be five of us road tripping over there it's gonna be fun road tripping it's a two hour two and a half hour drive Okay, so next up on the list, then I'll have butchered that one, is uh, shop tours. So yes, I, I wanted to do a, like a shop tour every Tuesday, um, and it got a tremendous amount of interest and people saying that they would like to. Uh, just the process of, of actually getting them and posting them has just been a little bit slow, which is fine. I'm not putting any pressure on anybody. I've got 10 people on the list to who are interested and who would, um, uh, are, are going to submit a shop tour to feature on my website. Uh, and... Um, just waiting on those. Again, no rush. But I wanted to bring that up because if you are interested in having your shop featured on my website, uh, send me a message, let me know, and I'll uh, send you the information for the process of getting that done uh, to promote your wood shop, to promote any type of content that you have or anything that you're trying to sell. Uh, I, I think it's, it's beneficial for everybody to not only get a glimpse inside of a lot of shops out there, um, just everyday wood shops, you know, uh, not necessarily something that uh, is is larger business related, um, which is fine if that's if that's your situation as well. Uh, but it's it's beneficial to see everyone else's setups just for uh, information's sake, you know, see how see what's working for other people, and it's also beneficial to promote other people's stuff because uh, the more people we have interested in woodworking, just generally speaking, the better it is for everybody as far as um, you know. Uh, company competition and all that good stuff. So if you are interested in having your shop featured on my website, send me a message. And if you do provide me the information to publish on the website, then I'll send you a free t-shirt or hat of your choice. So there's that. Next up on the list is, oh, um, for the, the bookcase video I just published, where is it? I said I was going to give away, well, I didn't say, well, I am going to give away this shelf pin drilling template from Rockler. They sent me another one to use. I've already got one. Mine's not broke. No need in opening this. So I said um, in the video that I'll figure out some way to, to give this away. Just go to my website and read the article. And the, that ended up, ended up being just leave a comment and I'll give it away. Well, <laughs> 486 comments later, 486 comments on that one article. Uh, I just randomly selected one. Um, that was a lot of comments. So just went through and clicked on one. So Anthony Scalaro, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. Uh, I sent you an email just a few minutes ago. You've probably already got it if you happen to watch this video. So Anthony Scalaro, um, you won the shelf pin drilling template. Appreciate everyone who's left who left a comment. That was a uh, a, a, an interesting number to wake up to this morning. Uh, Anthony also has a YouTube channel I uh, found by my uh, clicking around, and I'll have a link to it down in the description below. So thanks, everyone. Uh, the, the bookcase, by the way, very basic bookcase, but it leaves, it leaves a lot of 
um, design room for customizations. You know, you can add your own little decorative uh, baseboard or decorative crown molding, which I was so tempted to do, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's in my office, and the whole point of my office build was to uh, keep all the furniture in there extremely basic because I've got dogs, and the, the dogs have to stay in my office as far as sleeping at night. In the summertime, they spend the majority of the days outside because it's a beautiful weather outside. Uh, in the wintertime, it's really, really muddy. So they're in the house most of the day and they sleep inside at night. Uh, and they, you know, free roam of the house and walk around with us throughout the day. But if, if, if they're unsupervised, I guess, then we put them in the office um, just because that's where their dog bed is. And um, yeah, dogs have dirt and dust and hair and all that stuff. So keep it in the office. Unfortunately, it is my office. So that being said, I didn't want to make anything crazy decorative or like, I didn't want to go the fine furniture route because they're dogs. They're, they're fantastic dogs, but you never know when something crazy is going to happen. They, they end up knocking something over or, or we've got a puppy. Uh, I guess she's still a puppy. She's less than a year old. Um, chewing on stuff, which that was a, a little phase we had to go through. So, so yeah, I didn't want to go crazy with the design in my office and instead just went very basic. So everything's white, everything is modern, kind of square, rectangular, nothing crazy designed, and then accented with babinga because babinga is fun to say, uh, but also because I, I got a tremendous amount of babinga on hand, found a really good deal on it locally. Um, I guess it's been about six months from now and uh, yeah, got a lot. Hey, see right, right there. That's Babinga. Been working on it, working with it a lot. Um, so that's that. Next on the list is green gloves. So that was an odd um, spike of interest. It's it's interesting to see what audiences gravitate towards random stuff. So I used some green gloves in that video for the bookcase, and that got a lot of attention, which is again is interesting. So these are just regular. Um, shop gloves they're green but they've got this grippy stuff on them, this texture right so these fit my hand really well but this grippy texture gives me a little bit better well grip as i'm working with stuff it's the winter time and what what, what are your hands typically do in the winter time they dry out and they crack um so when they're dry cracky hands you typically have less grip on what you're using whatever you're grabbing uh, so these are thin enough, well, tight enough, I should say. Uh, they're pretty thick gloves, but they're tight enough to where I have good tactile feedback of interacting with the wood so I don't lose that connection, which is what you always want to have when you're you know, pushing wood through machinery that could potentially cut your hand off. <laughs> um, but they provide a good amount of grip while not getting in the way. So these are just, here, I'll put that up there. That's what these are. Um, there, I used to get the Harbor Freight black gloves, the real thick, uh, gloves for, um, you know, chemicals and stuff like that here in the shop, but these ended up being cheaper. They fit my hand better and I can get them on Amazon, which means I don't have to drive 30 minutes to Harbor Freight. So I'll have a link to these as well. Uh, by the way, these fit just a little bit small. So I wear the Harbor Freight large gloves, which are just a touch big on my hands. And these are large and they fit really well nice nice and tight fit like a glove there's that all right um next up on the list is murph guns <laughs> this was sent to me um it's a little rubber band shooter which is kind of realistic gun here um i'm not going to shoot it because i've been chasing rubber bands for too long already <laughs> but there, you, you can load up five of them over here and every time you press the trigger it'll jump up to the next one which therefore makes the top one go flying. So you can load five of these up and shoot five of them, and then eventually, ouch, there you go. But anyway, this is a pr pretty neat little uh, thing. I was gonna give it to my, um, my nephew if I see him uh, around the holidays, but uh, it's got a clip down here <laughs> from rubber bands. Anyway, this is pretty cool, uh, it was sent to me. Check out Murph Guns. I think it's MurphGuns.com. If I'm not, if, if that's not the case, then I'll put a link on my uh, on the screen or, or down below or something like that. But uh, a neat little laser cut rubber band shooter. 
Um, next up is, well, that's exactly what I wrote. Next up is, um, next up is most likely either a dog gate for my office or some CNC content. So the CNC machine, let me just touch on that really quick. I've been getting a lot of questions about the CNC machine. I've been saying that I'm going to produce a lot of CNC content, which I'm still going to do. Um, but real quick on the CNC machine, disclaimer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I did not get that CNC machine for free. However, Axiom does have an affiliate program. So I signed up for that. Uh, so I do have some vested interest in promoting that product. But before I do so, uh, I've had that since the beginning of September. So three months now. I wanted to put it through some through its paces, do some testing, um, kind of push it to see what it's capable of, try and find the limits here in the shop and um, get a little bit more comfortable with that specific machine. I, I've got a lot of CNC experience. I say a lot, a fair amount of CNC experience with a um, industrial job that I had back in 2011. I ran a four foot by eight foot Como CNC router uh, and I used SolidWorks for the parts to import in Sigma Nest where I could build my own tool paths and nesting and then ran those on the machine. Um, and I have six months experience doing that. And then of course the Shapeoko 2 and the X-Carve and then also a little mini engraver and then now this one. So uh, anyway, I wanted to work out any bugs that I had with the machine um, and get really, really familiar and comfortable with it before I start talking about it because I am going to be promoting it if I like it, which there you go. I like it. So, uh, yes, some CNC content should be coming, as I previously said. Uh, just a matter of timing and getting some stuff published. So, a couple things with that. Oh, here are some test pieces. They're right in front of me. That's convenient. So, I, ma I was making or cutting some hickory. This is just a just a, an a, um, ellipse, elongated circle. Yeah, that's it. Um, but hickory, and I was trying to to get some speeds down in hardwood. This one is 157 inches per minute. Nice and clean cuts. There's some ridges from the tool I was using, um, but no tear out right here on the end grain, which is what I was after. A uh, nice clean surface. But anyway, 157 inches per minute at a 0.262 depth of cut. Um, that's pretty quick. And this is a, uh, let's see, this one is 3 eighths of an inch bit at three eighths of an inch depth of cup, depth of cut um, and plywood. And it, that was moving 157 inches per minute. Nice, clean cutting. So the machine is really capable. This one's 100 inches per minute with a three eighths of an inch um, depth of cut in with a three eighths of an inch bit in Babinga. How you like that, right? That's pretty cool. That's that's moving. Anyway, I've got a bunch of examples. I'll get into the CNC stuff later. Um, do you guys want to see any of these, like the process of personalizing these cutting boards? So this is one that I made. It's a just a regular basic cutting board with a juice groove, uh, but you can personalize the bottom side of it. So I may, I may make a video on, on doing this particular process, customizing some um, SVG vectors. So this is three vectors stacked and customized to fit inside this uh, cutting board frame. I don't know if there's any interest in that. It's kind of basic, but um, I'll show it. And I think that's it. Oh, scatterbrained. Back to the next project, which is probably going to be a dog gate for my office. I'm undecided on which route I want to go. As I previously mentioned, my office is for my dogs. It has to have my dogs. So I want to make everything basic, but at, with that same token, the front side of the, the dog gate will face my dining room and kitchen area. So I want it to be kind of nice, right? So I'm thinking about for that one, making somewhat like a mission style, well, maybe mission style, three panel, um, just basically like a rail and style door. Um, or just make a plywood panel with, with some decorative trim at the top and CNC something decorative in it because it's a dog gate and my dogs will end up probably sitting behind it going eh, every now and then eh. you yeah, turn that into a gif gif <laughs> oh man all right guys it's after five now i need to get some stuff done so you guys take care have a great day and if you're going to be in birmingham saturday See you Saturday. If not, 
talk to you whenever I talk to you next. See ya.